Guys, let's continue discussing chapter 2. I know I'm not the right person to, to discuss this because as far as I know, research is like a most advanced subject that should be discussed by the professional researcher. But let's try to recall the terms and the concepts about research. And I know that in the past um, years, you've been um, through researches like that, you've, you've been through with different theses or presentation so like it so you've been um, um, aware and you have been introduced with different concepts and terms used in research okay chapter 2 evidence-based practice and research in nursing now what is the evidence-based practice it occurs when the nurse can integrate best current evidence with clinical expertise because, uh, and patient family preferences and values for delivery of optimal health so even up to the present days guys although there are a lot of regimens already interventions ang ginahatag sa pasyente gina-administer na mga tambal um actually research actually is continue gid siya naga-continue naga-continue daghan na kay mga changes mga trends sa mga medication nga wala sa una that's because of the the efforts of those researchers nationwide I, not just in nationwide but um worldwide because there are great researchers and innovators from other countries, especially first world country. And that's why, makuha po sa Pilipinas, ma-adapt sa Philippines. So there are six steps um, for changing practice as a result of evidence. First is, to cultivate a spirit of inquiry, nurses need to be curious and willing to investigate. That is why, guys, in hospital, um, there are like a monthly um, meeting na mag-present mo isa ka case. It's like you are uh, presenting a case based on your patient. So, na mga mga unique na case as well sa inyong ward. Gina-present na sa ward, gina-present na with supervisors, with the rest of the staff para mag-investigate kung unsay tama na intervention, asa nagkamali, ana. Late lately, guys, di ba na yung mga you know, rapid cases of COVID in our hospital. So, the staffs and yung katong mga infection control uh, mga staff, nag-meeting na sila just to, you know, to investigate as in a breach ng infection control. That's it. So, nurses need to be curious. Ask clinical questions. Search for the best evidence. Search for relevant evidence. Critically appraise the evidence. Um, integrate the evidence with clinical expertise and client family preferences. So, does that mean that it's correct? Yeah, okay, nagit ka ini, tama nagini. Then you have to apply it right away to the patient. No, you have also to put into consideration ang preference and wishes sa imong pa, sa imong pasyente o sa yung family. Implement and evaluate the outcomes of the intervention. Of course, there are always um, times na mamali or na always time na dili enough. So, you really have to do a, a thorough evaluation so what is research so you know already this because my research is a google entails using formal and systematic process to address problems and answer questions so the discipline thinking and the careful planning and execution that characterize research means result finding should be accurate dependable and free from bias that's it so there are two approaches to nursing research so later on guys when you reach fourth year hopefully um you will be um of course instructed to do your research and you will be choosing between quantitative and qualitative research so qualitative research a quantitative rather from the word quanti entails the systematic collection of statistical analysis interpretation of numerical data so that's in uh, includes tables graphs different form of graphs like that, that involves numbers so there are under quantitative research guys that belong the rang extraneous variables a variable that could influence the result of the study Result, results are characterized by statistical information like what I've said, tables and graphs. And then under quantitative research is what we call logical positivism. It means truth. 
is absolute and can be discovered by careful measurements. So, mao na ang discipline or mao na ang ginafollow ni quantitative research, kaning logical positivism. It means, tanan daw, mga tinuod ganang hitabu can be discovered by thorough and accurate careful measurement. Now, let's proceed to qualitative research. From the word quali, it is a systematic collection and the thematic analysis of narrative data. So, research collects and analyzes words, sorry, words, rather than numbers. So, more on words ni siya. At involved ani niya is naturalism. Reality is relative or contextual and constructed by the individuals who are experiencing a phenomenon. So, this research can be observed in the community, yes, by their beliefs, their traditions, like that. You can do a lot of interview, interv yeah, you can interview your, your respondents at any time. Yes, so that's Esquali. So nurses uses three distinct qualitative traditions. Phenomenology, phenomenology focus on the life experiences. So, muad to mo sa isa ka tradisyon, i-observe ni mo ang kung saan na sila mamuyo, what are their beliefs in life, how they um, integrate religion sa ilang daily life activities, like that. Ethnography naman focuses on the cultural patterns of thoughts and behaviors. Grounded theory focuses on the social processes, the interaction between in the community. Overview of the research process. I know you've uh, you are well knowledgeable with the research process but in nursing there are six general steps in nursing research so research process is the process which decisions are made that results in a detailed plan or proposal of study so there are six steps first is formulating the research problem and purpose of course without the problem without the the purpose of the study you cannot go on with your research so, ideas for research problems may arise from recurrent problems encountered in practice. So, like, kung, kung ay mong scope is gamay lang, you can go to the hospital and you can actually research about the current um, infection infect, infection na mga nahitabo sa pasyente or mga diseases, mga illnesses na current sa ilang situation karon. So, you can do that. It should be feasible to study. So, one strategy used to explore problem using PICO, patient, population, or probable of interest, intervention or therapy, comparisons of interventions, and outcome of the intervention. Now, let's go to, under under this research problem and purpose, ma-identify po that raog, dependent variable and independent variable. So, always remember that dependent variable is a characteristic or outcome. So, it is the outcome that researchers wishes to explain or predict. So, maon na siya ang um, dependent. Independent variable naman is the cause. So, don't forget that. Dependent for outcome and dependent for the cause. Yeah, that's it. And influence, presumed cause of or influence on the dependent variable. So this is the cause and the dependent is the effect. So don't forget that. Effect. So dependent is the effect and the independent is the cause. So it's just the cause and effect mechanism. Hypothesis naman is the predictive statement about the relationship between two or more variables. Of course, na kay mga hypothesis at the first step or the first phase of your research. And then ma-verify ni mo na if true yung hypothesis later on when you gathered all the data and the numerical information. And then, the second phase would be determining study methods. You will use different methodology. Methodology. You will choose if it's quality or quantity. So, research design refers to the overall structure or blueprint of the study. There are two, sorry, two major types of experimental design. The first one is non-experimental, 
no manipulation of the independent variables. It means dili ni mo um dili ka mag-apply og particular treatment sa isa ka tao og kanang imong ikaduang sample or even third sample. So no manipulation at all. When we say experimental design, it controls the independent variables by administering experimental treatments to some and withholding it from others. Experimental design is like there are two patients you give medication to this patient and you, you, you don't give to this one and then you after well, after like a day or after like an hour you have to reassess them and evaluate if of course na ay mga changes so that's experimental design you are manipulating one variable and you don't manipulate the other one so it's like experimental design so sample Sources of information or study may be humans, events, behaviors, documents, or biological specimens. Target population, universe elements to which in which the researcher wishes to be able to apply the study findings. So, mga target population is if belong into healthcare, of course, pasyente or nurses. Belong sa community, of course, sa mga tao nga nagpuyo sa isa ka lugar. Pilot study naman is a dress rehearsal before the actual study begins. The third step would be collecting research data. So there are various methods on how you collect data. It can be interview, it can be using um, interview questionnaire, uh, your, your, your respondents could actually sign it or you can actually write something on it. And then you have to collect data right after. So data should be consistent throughout the course of study. So rela reliability refers to the consistency of measures. And the validity, completeness, and conceptual accuracy of measures. The fourth step would be analyzing research data. You know, guys, the, 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 according to what I remember, the most difficult part of research is when you try to analyze the data because you really need to have a statistician, you know, matong ita mag statistician ninyo para matabang sa inyo mag compute, which is actually super hard. Listen, guys. Collected data are organized and analyzed to answer the research questions. So, descriptive statistics, procedures that organize and summarize the volumes of data. Measures of central tendency, monitoring, mean, when you're going to total the numbers, the total numbers. Median is, yes, that's it, when you're going to locate. So, kung sa center, ana ang mga numbers, kung sa pinaka center. Mode is the repeating number, or yeah, the repeating number in a part in your research. This is actually done in uh, usually in quantitative research. Measure of variability describe how values for a variable are dispersed or spread out, range and standard of deviation. You can actually read each definition on the box in your fundamentals of nursing. The fifth. Step would be communicating research findings. So after doing collating data, you have to make sure na na communicate niman as just a higher, higher apps like your your supervisor, for example, your head, your chief of clinics, your chief of hospital. It should be accessible and used to guide practice decisions. Communicated through publication in journals and conferences. Of course, those research actually guys are presented in journals. So, pag na yung mga seminar, usually ginahatag na siya for free. The sixth step, the last step would be using research findings in practice. There are three types of evaluation be before it's used in practice. So, it doesn't mean, guys, na nakabuo na research with all the data, so you've analyzed it, you've presented it already, mapahimo na na siya nga practice. There are actually scrutinization right after. So, the first one is scientific validation. Scrutinizing how the study was conceptualized design and conducted. Comparative analysis involves assessing study findings for implementation potential. And the cost-benefit analysis, potential risks and benefits of both implementing a change or not. So, himo nila na if, what if we implement na siya uh, na by risk sa pasyente, na by magay ng hospital, for example, or what if tili na implement, na by mawala or something, na abay mabawas sa uh, hospital practices so that's cost benefit analysis okay guys in america before conducting a research 
there are just a lot of disclosure or there are ways to protect the right of the respondents or the right of study of participants. So the first would be right not to be harmed. It means that risk of harm to a research subject is exposure to the possible of injury. So yes, um, you don't as a respondent, um, you have to receive all the information necessary. It can be immediate or delayed. Potential risk of participating in a study need to be detailed in informed consent. So, tana na possible negative effects, possible positive effects, ibutang gina siya sa informed consent. And then you let your patient read or you let the, um, shall, shall I say, the respondents, the participants in your study to read everything before um, letting the patient go into that research process. The second one is right to napane double L, right to full disclosure. It means that the act of making clear to the client's role in a research situation is a basic right. So before conducting and allowing the patient to participate, you explain everything to the patient, including those um, the downside of the research, the positive side. You explain it everything to your patient. Deception by either withholding information about client participation in a study or giving false and misleading info must not occur. So that's it. Pwede ka ma-charge, Anna, or may mga cases, Anna, na ipag-withhold mo ang certain information. Next would be right to self-determination. It means that participants should feel free from constraint, nanay S, sorry, nanay S, constraints, coercion or angel influence to participate in study. Murag dili ni dili dapat na i-coerce ka. Dili dapat nga pugson ka nga moabil jud ana because our patient has the right to uh, determine if gusto niya mag-participate ana or dili. Next would be right to privacy. Of course, during conducting interview or during the process of research, um dapat we have to put the client at the first priority so to avoid later embarrassment. Confidentiality, you have to make sure that you remember this term, means any information of a participant relates will not be made public or available to others without a participant consent. So, kung sama na siya na um, result, you don't need to release it to the public without even informing the patient or without even informing your respondents. You make sure na akbalo sila before releasing the info. This is what we call in America HIPAA, means Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. This law is available to participants. It protects the respondents in America. So, ginaprotektahan ni siya ang mga katong nag o mga research process. Measures that provides rights to them. So, this is the right of respondents. So, that's why we uh, researchers in America, they cannot actually coerce easily the physicians, um, or the nurse researchers, they cannot actually um, put constraints to the patient because there are a lot of laws uh, that protects the client or the respondent itself. So that would be all guys and then chapter 3 will follow.